Hi, honey. How was your day? Oh, I uh, I stopped a father from drowning his son as a sacrifice. Just another day as a Lyft driver. That's... Can you imagine the things that they see, Tony? I, I don't want to imagine the things. They... No. It's probably the same things we talk about, quite honestly. Um, except they see, they, they see them more up close and personal and probably in ways where it never turns into actual crimes or, 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 con- uh, or conviction of crimes. Uh, yeah. With the individuals that go into your your vehicle, no, no, I uh, I, I use Lyft, I use Uber quite a bit uh, when I'm not in my own city. Uh, I've always had good experiences, but I can only imagine what they uh, what they see on a daily basis. Uh, well, this, it's kind of the same with cab drivers. I mean, mm-hmm. they see everything. Thing. Yeah, it, exactly. Uh, In a harrowing turn of events, a vigilant Lyft driver's quick thinking reportedly prevented what could have been a tragic outcome in Chicago. As distressing details surface about the incidents, the importance of following one's instincts, even in seemingly routine situations, comes to the fore. Which is good, because I think a lot of times we're just like, "Ah, it's your problem, goodbye. Jeremiah Campbell didn't do that, though. 29 found himself in the midst of a controversial situation when a uh, Lyft driver transporting him and his two-year-old son to an address on the South Shore Drive dialed 911. The driver had overheard Campbell utter disturbing remarks about intending to drown his son as a sacrifice to Jehovah. Mm. It seems like a legitimate 911 call. Hey, uh, 911, what's your emergency? I'd like to sacrifice my son to Jehovah. On that wow. very night, an anonymous call was made from the South Shore Drive residence reporting a child having drowned in a bathtub. This led the Chicago Police Department to the scene promptly. Upon their arrival, their attempts to get a response by knocking went unanswered. However, a glance through the window revealed a concerning sight. A man later identified as Campbell making suspicious movements over the bathtub. Relying hmm. on information from the Lyft driver and the subsequent call, CPD officers believe there were Witnessing a potential drowning in progress, their immediate decision to intervene was pivotal. They forced their way inside, prompting Campbell Campbell to hastily remove the child from the water. The toddler, drenched and coughing, was quickly handed over to the paramedics, who transported him to a nearby hospital. Meanwhile, Campbell was detained and also sent for a mental health evaluation. Well, good. Can we just lock him up for good? Uh, At this point, you're trying to drown a child. Chances are you'll do it again. Uh, well, yeah, if you know, at first you don't succeed, try again. <laughs> exactly. This is what people like this do. Tanya, a witness to the events that night, described the situation as awful. The haunting scene reminding her of her own grandson, reinforcing the gravity of what could have been a devastating tragedy. Campbell is no stranger to the law. Court records reveal his previous conviction in 2021, where he was found guilty of aggravated battery, resulting in significant bodily harm and domestic battery leading to bodily harm. That was 2021, and he's out with custody of a child. Great. Brooks and Dunn, please. Only Only in America. America. As a result, he was handed a 36-month probation sentence in November of 2021, which basically means here's a piece of paper, don't do bad things. Furthermore, he had violated a protection order. Oh, see, it worked really well, which barred him from contacting the victim, his child's mother, and other family members. He's currently being held without bail in the Cook County Jail. Local resident Chris Beasley expressed his shock upon hearing the allegations. As a father, he found it difficult to fathom such a horrifying act. He, along with several others interviewed on WGN, commented the Lyft driver for his timely action, commended him. Beasley emphasized the importance of speaking out, even if one might be unsure. Fair to say something than nothing at all, than not to say something and something bad happens it's very true i mean that's it is good to say something even if and that's i think the fear so many people have is what if i'm wrong what if somebody thinks i'm this or that or it's like it's not about you it's about trying to protect someone who's innocent and can't protect themselves not about what someone will end up thinking of you and I think, you know, and if somebody is pissed at you because you called the cops and it turned out to be nothing, well, at least you were doing what needed to be done just to make sure everybody was safe. Yeah. You know, I, um, uh, I, I agree uh, 110% just to be sure. I've had uh, a couple incidents in my life where I was the one that was calling 
uh, and I, I, there was, I think I've said this story before on the air where it was neighbors that were above me and it sounded like there was abuse going on. Like he was mm. abusing his wife and his family. I called the cops. This was in, uh, Petoskey, Michigan, uh, in about, I don't know, 15 years ago and, uh, called the police. You know, they, they came up, they left. Uh, and then the police uh, contacted the landlord and let them know. And then the landlord wanted to speak with me. And the landlord scolded me for what? for calling and reporting that there was something going on in that house, which I could hear because the floors were like paper thin. I, 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 would, I wasn't just doing it on a suspicion. There was screaming. There was swearing. I could hear a child crying. I could hear things breaking. I could hear shit slamming on the ground whether that was a person or a thing i don't know but it wasn't oh a good moment in time and, and I the landlord's pissed at you for this they're pissed at me for this because and here's the kicker and i mean this with no disrespect but this was the excuse that was given by the landlord not the individual was they're a veteran oh come on and i'm like and like, uh, and if we're statistically to look at individuals who are suffering with PTSD uh, or and maybe more likely to engage in such behavior because of that diagnosis. Right. Well, statistically speaking, not my opinion, uh, just facts and truth that could lead to a more likelihood that this person is engaging in that sort of activity. It's not necessarily the sole reason, nor did I call the police because I knew they were a veteran. I had no clue. All I knew is that there was a man upstairs out of control that sounded like he was abusing his family. Yeah. I called. Nothing happened. But I called. So you know, at least there was a record of it. And then somebody's like, well, you know, they're a veteran. You gotta, you know, I'm like, bullshit. I don't fucking care who you are. I don't care anything it's like not anyway uh but i also had an incident uh, a couple of years ago where uh i was out back with my daughter she stepped on a piece of broken glass on our porch and you know she's a little kid she was screaming she was mad she was you know in pain and you know I, we were out there and i had to pull it out uh with a, a tweezer and all that but it was noisy but a few uh, hours later, uh, and I will say it was hours later, so I guess the... Um, uh, they weren't real the concerned. The concern or response time wasn't that good if I was actually doing something horrible. Uh, really wasn't the greatest, but they did show Jeez. up. The neighbors heard it, and they didn't know what was going on. I was new to the area, uh, and they showed up, and they're like, I'm like, oh, okay, I get it, sure. Like, can we see her? Yeah, come on down. Came down like, yeah, I stepped on a piece of glass and that was that. And it was like, you know, thanks for, I appreciate it. You know, if something was happening, I'd want, you know, to have someone call too. If I wasn't home or something and my child is screaming. Um, so it's always important to, to not think about yourself or what someone's going to think of you uh, in that situation. The worst thing that can possibly happen is, you were wrong. You just made a mistake. It's not a big deal. You're not going to be prosecuted for it. You're not going to get in trouble for it. Uh, you may just feel a little silly for a moment. But all those times when we don't do those sort of things and we think there's something going on, somebody's life could be in danger. And yeah, I would rather be the one calling the cops and go, you know what? I'm sorry. I, I heard something. I, yeah. I thought I needed to do something. I'm glad I didn't. I had one the other week, literally the other week. Uh, there was a, a strange man that was standing uh, in the parking lot of my kid's high school. Uh, and just, just, it was insane. He was sitting there. He was sitting there smoking by a tree. Didn't seem to be looking like he was waiting for a student or their child or anything. Just very weird. Uh, and and you know, kids are coming and going. It's a high school. Uh, that was rather odd. I didn't say anything at that moment. Um, then... Uh, a few weeks later, uh, my fiance is at uh, Harper's Elementary, and there's the same guy, like, hanging out by the school, just kind of lurking around. That one I called the cops on. Yeah, that's not acceptable. It's like, okay, we're, this is more than just, like, a guy that was walking through the parking lot and stopped for a smoke. Uh, this is a person that's staking out schools. Uh, so, for whatever reason. Yeah. Took it, uh, and she sent me a picture. I called, and then they went and, and looked into it.
Could have been absolutely nothing. Could have just been a vagrant or somebody walking around doing whatever. Uh, but it's better safe than sorry when you have something like that going on that does, on the surface, look to be a threat. It's, it's better to make sure that they're not than let the threat uh, execute the plan that they're attempting to do you're locked into the hidden killers podcast want more start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through apple podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a true crime today premium plus member exclusively on apple Podcasts. more of the hidden killers podcast dropping soon press subscribe now